Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. The title of this lesson is Richard Attenborough and his film Gandhi. Richard Samuel Attenborough, 1923-2014, requires little introduction to cinephiles around the globe. Richard Attenborough was a British film director, actor and producer. As a director, his most tremendous achievement goes with the 1982 film Gandhi, which bagged 11 nominations for Academy Awards, out of it, it won 8 awards in 1983. These Academy Awards include Attenborough bagged 2 awards for Best Picture and for Best Director. Ben Kingsley, who played the titular role, won the Academy Award for Best Actor. The cinematographers of the film, Gandhi, Billy Williams and Ronnie Taylor, the editor of the film, John Bloom, costume designers, John Molo and Banu Ataya, screenwriter John Briley were also among the eight winners of the Academy Award for the film Gandhi. Learning objectives of the module are to enable the learner to understand a brief career history of Richard Attenborough as a film director, to comprehend the socio-political background of the film Gandhi, to follow various aspects of cinematic adaptations followed in the biopic on Gandhi, and to critically respond and appreciate the film Gandhi. Richard Attenborough was an alumnus of the English Royal Academy of Dramatic Art or RADA from where he graduated in the year 1942. From 1941 onwards, he started acting in theatre. His cinematic acting debut was in 1941 war movie in which we serve, directed by the famous British playwright and filmmaker Noel Coward and David Lean. And the men who serve it. Proceed with the following operations as ordered. One, give us a kiss. Two, chuck us another among sandwiches. In Steven Spielberg's science fiction films, the Jurassic Park trilogy, Richard Attenborough's acting excellence was raised to a new height. He played the role of John Hammond, the billionaire who becomes the financial sponsor for creating the sprawling wildlife park in a remote fictional island, New Blood. Delighted to meet you finally in person, Dr. Grant. I can see that my uh, 50,000 a year has been... It's not with his film Gandhi, Attenborough's Indian connections began. Previously, in Satyajit Rai's Our Own Rai's 1977 movie, Shatranj Ke Khiladi, or The Chess Player, a film made with the background of 1897 Sepoy Mutiny, the role of General James Outram was immortalized by the acting brilliance of Richard Attenborough. Well now, Jirwan Khan, the keeper of the royal pigeons, received a keylat to reward, I suppose, huh? Yes, sir. Take over, Weston. And any suspicion that you hold a brief for the king would ruin your chances. You remember that? Oh, what a lovely war. 1969, a musical comedy satire on the political events of the First World War was Richard Attenborough's directorial debut. This anti-war film, which intermittently made use of the theatrical and cinematic techniques, especially those of the documentary tradition, is critically appreciated for its fresh mass on scene and new narratological methods used. I think we made it. Where are we, Sarge? I reckon we've broken into a bit of a lull. Yeah. Nice, ain't it? Attenborough's filmography as a director include Cry Freedom, 1987, Chaplin, 1992, Shadowlands, 1993, In Love and War, 1996, etc. The film 
Closing the Ring, released in 2007, is the directorial swan song of Attenborough. Closing the Ring, a romantic drama largely narrated in a flashback, is about the intricate relationship between Ethel and her just dead husband Chuck, who was a US war veteran. I found a ring, a gold ring. Ethel and Teddy. Ethel and what are you talking about? Please love you, Teddy. I'll be yours to the day I die, I swear. I love you. I never heard her say those words. Neither did you. You're not in love with her? No, I'm not. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. Attenborough passed away in 2014 at the age of 90, seven years after the release of his last film, Closing the Ring. However, he had the rare privilege of a posthumous archival audio appearance in the third part of the Jurassic Park trilogy, Jurassic World, directed by Colin Trevorrow and released in 2015, a year after Richard Attenborough's death. Attenborough's film, Gandhi, is his cinematic magnum opus, for which he spent 20 years in preparation. Gandhi is a joint collaborative production venture of international film investors, Gold Crest Film International, Indo-British Films Limited and Film Development Corporation of India. British imperialism in India and its most violent repressive apparatuses, global racism and its apartheid practices elitist national political movements of the time with their disconnect with the ordinary masses, right-wing nationalism and its murderous schemes, religious fundamentalism with its argument of majoritarianism in the formation of a nation, non-violence and its frequent failure for immediate response and the resurgence of a colonized country into freedom are the various political subtext featured in the film. Journey, territorial movement spanning from the local to the global is the most frequently used leitmotif in Attenborough's Gandhi. Des hommes, des gouvernements, des dignitaires du monde entier sont venus aujourd'hui. Mais il est vêtu comme un coulis. Je croyais qu'il était avocat. Monsieur Gandhi, avez-vous refusé de porter des vêtements européens Non, je n'ai pas refusé. J'ai... Considering the further accelerated global scale transference of the Gandhi cult in the contemporary political context, the film can be considered as a work in political prediction that foregrounds the strength and dilemma of oriental non-violence as an alternative political and spiritual philosophy. The film Gandhi, which is entirely delivered in a flashback, begins with a couple of late evening wide-angle shots of an unspecified but set to suggest the time of the 1940s banks of the Ganga, the river in which Gandhi's cremation ashes were finally disposed of. The crimson setting sun in the horizon, a few rusting boats in the water, a few men washing their clothes on the river bank and a few homeward going cross in the twilight skyline makes Ganga the focus of the shot look sad. The first long shot dissolves into another long shot but closer than the first which makes the boats larger the people more visible, the song they sing more audible and the setting sun more reddish. The folk song evokes a sense of sad ending of something. These two shots suggest the end of the day and the end of an era with the end of the man Gandhi. Then the following words are superimposed on the river bank shot. I quote, no man's life can be composed in one telling. 
There is no way to give each year its allotted weight to include each event, each person who helped to shape a lifetime. What can be done is to be faithful in spirit to the record and try to find one's way to the heart of the man. These were Attenborough's words. The final shot of the film, which depicts the disposal of Gandhi's cremation ashes in the Ganga in an early morning with the rising sun in the background suggesting a sunrise of the Gandhian ideals completes the cinematic circle composed meticulously by the director Richard Attenborough. The final sequence where also water predominates are overlaid with the following words of Gandhi, I quote, when I despair I remember that all through history the ways of love and truth has always won. There have been tyrants and murderers and for a time they can seem invisible but in the end they always fail. Think of it always." Uncaught. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was essentially a man of elements and the film Gandhi succeeds in bringing together the natural elements of water, air, earth, fire and space to its cinematic body very effectively at various times. The water of spatial movements, the air of political changes, the earth of contestations, the fire of violence and the vast abstract space of Indian spirituality are seamlessly interconnected in this highly complex biopic on Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, one of the most readily recognizable human figures in the history of human civilization. In the movie Gandhi, Attenborough compresses the real time of 52 years in the life of Mahatma Gandhi from 1893 to 1945 into a real time of 190 minutes. What is, if not change, the central theme of the film? The sweeping personal, domestic, professional, spiritual, political, spatial and physical changes the filmic protagonist Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi undergo or are subjected to form the fundamental emphasis of the film. Revolution could be another synonym for change. There are many a Gandhi in the film at different stages. However, by the end of the film, those different streams of Gandhi merge into the last Gandhi, the martyr. Gandhi, the devout husband of Kasurba Ben, Gandhi, the agitated young attorney in South Africa, Gandhi, the mass leader who sought and found his people in India, Gandhi, the political activist who preached and practiced an alternative political ideology to that of the Western value system, and Gandhi, the spiritual icon, crisscross Attenborough's filmscape with amazing diversity, tremendous determination, tenderest emotions, and with a childlike innocence throughout. After the initial riverbank shots, the viewers are taken to the Birla house on 30th January 1948 in a winter evening. Through a top to bottom pan shot with blurred images of shining leaves of a tall tree, a close-up shot of a young man's head from the back is shown. When he turns about, a grumbled face is seen. Here, the director introduces Nathuram Vinayak Godse in a close-up shot even before the protagonist Gandhi was introduced. Then the two collaborators of the assassin are also introduced. A few minutes later, Gandhi was introduced through a long shot arriving at the prayer stage in the garden, making him scarcely distinguishable in the crowd. Then the most infamous murder in the history of India was depicted. In the middle of the official funeral procession of the 78-year-old slain leader, which was slowly marching towards the camera in daytime, through a sudden flashback jump cut 
of reverse direction, the aerial shot of a swiftly passing train away from the camera at night in another country in another winter evening was shown. This sudden transition very effectively registers a spatial remoteness and temporal reverse motion from New Delhi in India on 31st January 1498 to Peter Marisburg Railway Station in South Africa on 7th June 1893. The 23-year-old young Gandhi's experience of racial discrimination and apartheid at Peter Marisburg was the most enduring epiphanic moment which brought in a trajectorial shift in the life of the protagonist of the film. From Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, a young business lawyer to Gandhi, the political activist. Richard Attenborough's film Gandhi is not entirely a docudrama based on facts alone. Many fictional elements for the sake of making the film dramatic and emotionally charged and on the demands of the film industry were employed by the director. On this insertion of fictitious events in the movie, Hey Stephen elaborates, I quote, both exaggeration and invention characterize the fictitious scene where Gandhi persists in burning his own and other Indians' registration certificates despite three terrific baton blows from a Johannesburg policeman. Gandhi was never beaten by the police and he describes the occasion as a meeting of 2,000 Indians not the few dozen shown in the film, on the grounds of the main mosque with some English reporters present. No policemen, let alone policemen beating Gandhi, are mentioned. Equally fit to the dramatic charge by mounted police on the peaceful possession of volunteers and strikers at the site of a mine, the charge being halted by the horses themselves who rear up rather than step on the marchers kneeling together in front of them. This scene might have been inspired by Gandhi's report that thousands of laborers struck work whereupon mounted military policemen chased the strikers and brought them back to their work, while others threw stones at the police, many of whom were wounded by the gunfire and some killed and still others returned voluntarily. Gandhi was miles away at that time. Gandhi's inception into active Indian politics is another important episode in the film. His arrival to India in 1915 at the Mumbai port and the mass reception he was given in the presence of Jawaharlal Nehru and Sardar Patel was followed by the shortest ever public speech by Gandhi. Later on, Realizing that the Indian freedom movement at the time was not in connect with the ordinary Indians living in thousands of villages across the vast country, Gandhi undertakes a discover India journey across the breadth and length of the nation. This discovery of India by Gandhi is very effectively depicted in the film. From this depiction onwards, India's struggle for freedom comes out of the luxurious living rooms and gardens of the indigenous elite nationalist politicians to the open space of political battles 
waged in thousands of villages and hundreds of cities in India. Gandhi's intervention made the fight for freedom pan-Indian, inclusive and literally national. Of course, such reductive filmic representations of their larger, wider, diverse political struggles into a single person will invite genuine criticisms in large quantity. However, appreciations of the following kind are also showered on Richard Attenborough's biopic on Gandhi. Akhil Gupta says, I quote, with good reason, Attenborough chose to tell the story of Gandhi as a political leader. Though the film touches on domestic matters that have no overt significance, it's the important political events of Gandhi's times that occupy the viewer's attention over most of the film's three hours. Some events, like the Jallian Bagh massacre, are only incidentally connected to Gandhi himself. England is so powerful! They are mainly important in establishing the mood of the period, forming the canvas on which Gandhi portrait is painted. In this respect, Attenborough has zoomed in unerringly. Gandhi's importance to history lies in his role as a politician." Unquote. The film also raises questions on the political correctness of selecting a white-skinned European to play the lead role of a brown-skinned Indian political leader. Ravi Shankar and George Fenton's music and John Bloom's editing, along with the precise and effective cinematography by the duo Billy Williams and Ronnie Taylor, contribute significantly to the directorial brilliance of Richard Attenborough in making this movie a classic one. Before we conclude, I would like to mention two other significant bio pictures on Mahatma Gandhi. Vithalbhai Javeri's five and a half hour long documentary film, Mahatma, Life of Gandhi, 1689 to 1948, is a commendable audiovisual document on Gandhi, which was released in 1968. It was a collaborative venture of the Gandhi National Memorial Fund and Films Division, Government of India. Apart from scripting and direction, Vithalbhai Javeri also did the voiceover of the film. It was here that Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was born on the morning of October 2nd, 1869. Uttamchand Gandhi, Mohan's grandfather, was the Diwan of Porbandar. Karamchand Gandhi, Mohan's father, succeeded Uttamchand as Diwan. Karamchand, like his father, was a man of principle and loved virtue more than wealth. Mohan's mother, Putlibai, was deeply religious and had a strong personality. She would take the hardest vows without flinching. Her influence, more than any other, molded the character of Mohan. At the age of six, Mohan was sent to school close to his house. As a student, he was mediocre but punctual. While he was very gentle and playful, he was obstinate. In this small room, his books and his lessons were his sole companions. Another renowned Indian filmmaker, Shyam Benegal, also directed a biopic on Gandhi. Shyam Benegal's film on Gandhi is titled The Making of the Mahatma 
which was released in 1966. In this film, Rajit Kapoor is featured as Mohandas Gandhi and Pallavi Joshi as Kasturba Ben. The film is based on Fatima May's book, The Apprenticeship of a Mahatma. Barristers, what will you do? You should stay here. That's what I feel. What am I going to do here in Rajkot? The children will miss you. And what about you? You won't. I will not leave this compartment. Where does it say reserved for Europeans only? Please show me. Get off my train. I will not leave the van. I will protest to the authorities. In the luggage van. That's for you. Been rejected. Two new bills have been passed. One to register all Asians in South Africa and the other to close the door to all those except indentured laborers who may wish to come here. We have come here today to get rid of our dog collars, to burn these certificates of our humiliations. May I ask all those who wish to burn their certificates to please come forward. Thank you for watching the video.